been working so hard to turn this awkward area of our apartment into a functional dining nook, and we did it. It's also pretty y'all. Um, see how we did it. This is a rental. We are not trying to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on stuff we are leaving when we go. So I was looking to do this on a budget like this big that looks real glamorous. Oh, hi, Ikea. <laughs> You're real good at that. And so Ikea cabinets were the right choice for us. We also looked at some at Lowe's, but the price point was right and the size was right. We kitchen needed them. cabinets. Kitchen, yeah, kitchen cabinets. And these ones are not like your regular cabinets, these are the up high cabinets, like the ones that go above a fridge, because that was the right depth and width to go within this space. We bought three Ikea cabinets, one, two, and a third here. There's a black space, there's a, like a black box space that I'll explain to you. We are not super handy. So we built our shelves and then please meet our wonderful foreman Marcus, who really designed and built a little wood stand out of two by fours to have the shelf sit on so we could have a nice toe kick and it sits at the proper height. We built essentially a little black box because this cabinet does not go all the way to the wall. There is So we measured a space and built this box to sit in here on top of the frame. And once we did that, we added uh, basically like little coasters on the bottom. Our floors are more like a really challenging putting green. And so we needed, we needed things that we could adjust so that the bench sits level, even though our floors are definitely not. So once the base was assembled, we got in here and made sure that it fit and that the measurements were right. And then we got the cabinets on and dealt with the box. The big mistake we made is we installed the legs previously and you want to just go ahead and leave the legs undone because it's going to be easier to install the legs from the top down versus the side. As you can see, we're trying to jack around and that just learn from our mistakes, y'all. This is super heavy. It does not need to be secured to the wall to be secured. So once we got that in and we got all of our base secured and we got the black box, the black hole back here, all down and everything fit right. Next is to make sure that you measure precisely because you need to screw your cabinets to the base so you've got one whole piece. As we're sitting on this, we needed to reinforce so it could support all of our weight. So we just cut two by fours to the height of the cabinet, put them right in the middle, measured, put a screw in, get two long boards to sit on top of the cabinets, bought a very simple, very cheap, Toe kick, nail gun to crown molding to the wall, make sure all the nails were flat, sanded everything down, caulked the edges, painted it. That corner spot, we had to create another little piece of crown molding and fill the rest in with some caulks. Our walls are not straight either, that the crown molding bows a little bit. It's fine, the cushion sticks up, you can barely see it. We were being fancy. And so we decided we have an electrical outlet that's behind here and we wanted a way to keep access to it. So we used a shielded cable that's like what's in the wall to wire a new outlet on the surface of the bench. We connected the outlet to the original outlet using a Romex cable and a grommet plug. All that's left then is the cushion. And as beautiful as it is, again, we can't take any credit for it. The Thanks, shout out is for my mama. We did some measurements and I ordered the fabric and had it shipped to her and she did all of this beautiful upholstery work for us. As far as an upholstery job, this is a little bit questionably rigged. If I was doing this properly and with an unlimited budget, these would be individually sewn with long zippers so that they could be reused in a wash. I don't have an unlimited budget and I was trying to make this quick and dirty. So what we actually did is it's the upholstery and then the foam and then, was it particle board or just thin wood? It's thin wood. You can absolutely use particle board. You really need to go and put your board up to your fabric to see what the bend is. And we had to mark it off to see like, okay, this is how far I have to sand down. We put the board on and staple gunned it down. If you do this and you're putting a whole bench together that you line up 
all of your corners before you start staple gunning. I would even go so far as to say that after you have done your corners, go ahead and flip the entire cushion upholstery piece up and double check it because especially this piping can fall up or down and look janky and there is nothing more torturous than thinking you're done with a project and then going back to pick out staples out of fabric. Ask me how we know. This little portion right here, we straight up just cut the fabric so that it wouldn't rip itself and then use E6000 on the, the cut line to keep the fabric from fraying further. Again, quick and dirty, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we did do that was super valuable and I think is so, so glad we did, we had our friends from a company called Sort & Sweet, which is an organizing company, come in right as we were starting this project when we had just these base cabinets and the old China Hutch still in here. And they helped me sort through everything and call and get rid of a lot and donate a lot, but also really utilize the space most effectively. It needed to be our dining room seating, but it also needed to be storage space for us. And having a professional organizer help with that, game changer, y'all. In awe of them. Uh, we'll link them for you guys, and you can always DM me if you want me to connect you with them. A few mistakes we made that I thought might be helpful for you to hear. When measuring the width of our cushion and of the fabric, we measured from the wall and did not account for the three quarters of an inch crown molding, which is why you can see our our cushion overhangs a little bit. But to be honest, I kind of like that. It covers it covers it a little bit more. It makes some of our mistakes a little bit less noticeable. It makes it a little more comfortable. It's great. But if that would bother you, then do it differently. You might notice that there are a couple of places where the white's a little scanty looking uh, because these are cabinets that are pre-made and pre-fab. They're not painted like they have, is it a coating or what is on? The, the, it's, there is like a, there is like a little like plastic covering on the wood in front which can come off and the wood underneath is not painted. Yes, so when you're cutting in, and into cabinets, know that that can leave you raw edges that are then gonna peel because Asher found those raw edges and was like, oh, let me peel all this off. And we used it as a paint swatch to match the paint that we were using for the crown molding so that the crown molding paint would match the Ikea white. And then we use that same to cover the spots. And yeah. it's a perfect match. And this is going to be where our 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 it. children and our children's friends gather and eat. This is going to get messy. We have designed it that way. Mm -hmm. The fabric we bought was the fancy outdoor fabric. Yeah, this is sunbrella fabric, the stuff that goes in outdoor cushions. It's not the softest, like it is not the most luxe, but it's really soft. But water and stains literally pill and sit right on the top of it. So when oatmeal lands on it, I can wipe it right off. And if things get super, super, super gross in here, we can just pull all the staples out, wash it, and then just reinstall it. And we can probably do that a couple of times. A couple of times. We saved probably three or four hundred dollars on upholstery costs because my mom did this for us. We saved. So to be so so when we tell you that we built this entire bench for under six hundred dollars, there's a little bit of cheating that we want to be honest. But we did spend less than six hundred dollars on this entire thing. Yeah. Next on my list is getting rid of that ceiling boob and making it really beautiful in here. That's so, a whole nother video. So though. what we're saying is, in a month or two, dining room nook aesthetics part two coming, coming at, at you. Jinx, you owe me a coke. We don't have any in the house. I guess I can't talk. <gasps> Ah, this is the best. He's never quiet. <laughs> I you guys.